Joy, joy, joy. This is Swami the Orange Cowboy. Welcome to another episode of Angel Feathers. Today on the show, my guest is Pauline Crawford Oms. She's a change maker. She helps people transform conflict into conversation. She's also known as Ms. Magical Conversations. Welcome to the show, Pauline. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Swami. It's absolutely delightful to be with you. Now, in this conversation, in this human relationship field, you actually had a time where the angels helped you with your relationships. Is that right? It was, yes. Uh, it was a time when I was, I was on my own. I'd been divorced from my first husband, who I was with for 30 years. And so I was very used to being with somebody, but over 16 years, um, I was looking for my soulmate. And I would write in my book every night and ask the angels, if they would bring me somebody, somebody who would be unconditionally in love with me and would be that person I would be a companion with for the rest of my life. And um, it took some time, but I was very persuaded. And in fact, I used to find a lot of feathers. I was very observant to find feathers on my daily jaunt around the gardens I was living in. And uh, she got to my 60th birthday and it was kind of a watershed. And I thought, well, I'll be okay if he comes or if he doesn't come. And I kept on writing, I kept on writing. And then at a very obscure point in my life where uh, my mother had passed on, I was on my own as I had been for the 16 years, but I was moving house and I was a bit of a nomad and I didn't know what I was doing and I kept on writing. And uh, I was sent to a conference in Europe, in Budapest, uh, which I didn't want to go to, but I, I, the angels kept on saying, go, go. And the person who wanted me to go bought the ticket and paid for it. So I'm, <laughs> I'm on an aeroplane and I'm saying to the angels, well, you know, what am I doing? Where am I going? And it was interesting the night before I wrote in my book, um, so I'm going to Budapest. I hope I meet the good, you know, good people and maybe my soulmate, someone who's unconditionally in love with me. And I met him there. Wow. wow. <laughs> and I saw him across the lobby at the beginning of the conference day. And I thought, he looks interesting. It, it, Oh. I didn't know anything about him. He came across and told me his name was James Olmes. And uh, I loved his soft American accent. And uh, he liked my accent and my smile. And we just got into conversation. And we did actually indeed have a day of laughter and fun. And just, uh, it was a curious just tuning in. Uh, definitely the angels were with me. And he believed in angels as well. And, and the, the, the magic was that the following morning, we, I came down to breakfast and he was sitting in the corner and I said, oh, can I join you? And we had a 35 minute magical conversation. Wow. And, and he told me everything about his life, how he believed in angels um, and lots of other things. And it was truly magic without any, without any expectation that it would actually lead anywhere. Right, 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 right. So now, did he come up to you initially at the at the event to say hello? Did he introduce himself to you? Well, it, it was interesting. He was sitting across the lobby, and, and we were not going to be in that same hotel. We were going somewhere else, but we didn't know. So when the organizers kind of drew us together, he came rushing across because he spotted me, and he said to me afterwards, he spotted my smile, and uh, he was wondering who I was. And... I had spotted him across the lobby and I thought, gosh, he looks very um, interesting. He had his white goatee beard and long white hair and he looked very um, professorial. And um, that's that first moment when he said his name and I heard his voice and I just thought, I know this person. Oh, wow. So it was, and he, he confessed the same, you know, he, he sort of said, I think I fell in love with you the first minute I saw you. Um, and the conversation over the breakfast had been so amazing because he's a very shy man. And he said to me, I don't normally tell people all these things. <laughs> you know, I mean, and the curious thing was that uh, he had a, a lot of things happening in his life. His, his wife had, had, had gone, left him rather. And uh, it was interesting when he said that, I thought, oh, that's good, he's single. But without, <laughs> without, without really, you know, thinking that what was gonna happen was gonna happen. And I had no idea because he lived in Las Vegas and I lived in London and that, that seemed, you know, 
when did when did the realization come that oh this is the angels fulfilling my my uh, wish well it it felt um it felt right right the really interesting is my daughter had had a dream about a year before where she visualized me with a man who had white hair and a goatee beard wow. and i'd actually forgotten that but when uh, jim and i got together and she saw him for the first time on skype she said that was the man in my dreams mm-hmm. um but what happened was that i left the conference i I emailed him on my BlackBerry, which I had at the time, and he started writing to me. And I didn't know he was an amazing writer. And we wrote 45,000 words over six months. Wow. So that was definitely the angels because we didn't ever speak on the phone. We, we just kept writing. And there was like, uh, it was almost like in the old days when you used to write letters. Sure. I'd wait for the email to pop in and it was always, you know, if it didn't come, I think, Oh, Oh, what's happened to him? But I didn't think of phoning him until about five and a half months. We kind of got, it got a little bit more romantic and we actually confessed our love for each other in our emails. Uh And then he called me and, and this is a very important part of the story. He called me. So I hadn't spoken to him in six months. We'd had all these letters. We knew each other inside out and we, I love, and I'm sitting on my bed in, in UK and he phones me and I'm thinking, will I know his voice? And, and of course, as soon as I heard his voice, it was like, it was a voice I'd known forever. Mm. And I'm sure we've been in other lives before. Yeah. And he said to me, and this will give you goosebumps. He said, I'd like to read you a letter, which I wrote to you 14 years ago. Wow. And I'm trying to take this in. I'm thinking, what does he mean? Anyway, it's a letter to, to my unknown lover, which he had written 14 years before because he knew that he hadn't met the right person in his life yet, even though he was with his wife. He knew that there was someone and there was someone that was a truly his soulmate. And he read me this letter and I was sitting there crying. It was just, it was so romantic. I was thinking, this doesn't happen to me. This is, this is, like, this is like a romantic movie that, that somebody has played to me. Yeah. And, and I said to him, I'm stunned, you know, and I said, I have to come to America. So I got on a plane and the angels took me to America. And in 10 days, we had a fabulous time and he proposed to me on day eight. And I said, yes, <laughs> because I've never done anything like that in my entire life. I've never been so spontaneous, oh. but I just knew it was right. And I had no idea where it was going to take us, what it was going to be like. But I trusted in the meeting it was definitely a meeting by the angels it wasn't an accident it's beautiful beautiful story and i and i do think if you write that book it'll it could be a great movie like uh, i thought of well I, I would love to i mean we've actually got all the forty five thousand words and the story i mean it, it, it carried on to many other things like he had operations he's had cancer we went to malaysia you know, we, we, we persevered through many, many huge uh, mountains, <laughs> but we're still here and we still love each other, even though it's not always easy, sure. but the magic is there. And, and, and I have a picture on the wall of a magical ra- a rainbow, because I think one of the things we get stuck in is the stuff of life. Yeah. And we have to look at the rainbow. Beautiful, beautiful, Pauline. That's such a lovely story with you and your angels and your husband. And thank you so much for sharing that. I hope to, I look forward thank to seeing you. the movie uh, with <laughs> Tom Hanks and Melanie Griffith or somebody like that. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, all the best to you, folks. Thank, thank you. you for tuning in. Thank you. Until next time, this is Swami, the Orange Cowboy for Angel Feathers, wishing you all joy, joy, joy. Mm-hmm.